Howdy there. This week I saw Tree of Life for the second time and I really enjoyed it. I think it's fantastic. Maybe I was a little uh, slightly less amazed the fir than the first time. Um, I still have to give it a 9, uh, you know, possibly a 10. Um, I definitely think that the second viewing helped a lot. Uh, it's about everything. Uh, it's about creation, uh, destruction, life, death, everything in between. Um, nature versus grace. It... Uh, it's produced, written, directed uh, by Terrence Malick. I think this is his fifth film. I can't keep him straight. Um, it uh, stars Brad Pitt, uh, Jessica Chastain, Sean Penn. Uh, the kids are who I wish I could remember. The kids really steal the show. Um, but I cannot remember any of their names. Um, it was definitely more linear than the first time uh, I saw it. Probably because the first time was just so different. And it is very different. It's still unlike any film I've ever seen. Uh, there is like a good chunk that is in order uh, but then again not really one thing that I kind of wonder and this is purely thinking out loud is I wonder if everyone's dead you know uh, I don't feel that I'm spoiling anything and I don't even know if I'm right but I think at the end we get to see heaven and everyone is there uh, even multiple copies of you uh, a person is there so I was wondering if maybe they're all there and they're all just reflecting on life uh, and they're all actually dead the entire film the reason I say that is because Things do happen out of order. We see before anything this tragic event that will apparently define uh, the rest of the film. And the characters look the same. Um, I mean, maybe slightly different, but they look the same. Uh, like they have not aged. And the, they don't age. Uh, at least the father the father and the mother I don't you know I don't know it's uh it's a totally subjective experience every audience member should be able to feel something um as a side note six people six people walked out of the theater um given four of those people were all in the same group so maybe one was like, you know, I'm done. Uh, they didn't give it a chance. You know, to get your money back for a movie, you have to leave within the first half hour. Um, so of a, you know, two hour, 15 minute movie, I think leaving within the first half hour does not give it a chance. And especially when that first half hour is highly surreal. Um, but needless to say, six people did walk out. Um, it's very challenging. Uh, you know, this is a movie lover's movie. Uh, it's gorgeous. I mean, that goes without saying. Uh, the Terrence Malick films, you know, leak beauty. Uh, and this one does too. I mean, it's just overwhelming at some points. Uh, at some, you know, sometimes that's all you get is just shots, beautifully composed shots of things we take for granted. 
Um, you know, this movie's got everything, and it's got nothing. It really, I think, is just supposed to designed to connect with deep emotions that lie within you and with everyone. Um, you, you can be sitting there thinking different thoughts uh, than anyone else, uh, but, you know, if you were ever born and are still alive, then there's going to be something that makes a deep impact uh, in this film, if you pay attention and watch it. Uh, I, I mean, I can't pretend to know what it's about. In fact, I mean, I'm not... I think it's about what you want it to be about. Uh, but it's about life. This I know. And it's about death. Um, all the performances are really great. Uh, I haven't seen Brad Pitt this good in a while. He's very intense. Uh... He has this kind of energy. I mean, I read a lot of reviews that call him an abusive character. I don't really see that. Um, I kind of look at him as a Midwestern father. Uh, you know, I recognize some things from my childhood. And even more, I recognize many more things from some of my friends' childhoods. I never considered their fathers abusive. Uh, but a lot of people are calling him an abusive father in this movie, which I cannot agree with. Um, he is a father. But he is a very intense. Uh, he, uh, there is an element of danger to basically every moment. He, he seems to always be boiling. Uh, even when he's at ease something behind his eyes is just on fire and it looks like he could do anything at any moment uh, you know he's shown sometimes very very loving to us he's always very loving to his family uh, always hugs kisses um, head pats uh, but there's always some tinge to it some element of danger which I think is very much like the relationship with your father I mean obviously uh, I'm a man um, perhaps it's to the male and to the male's father where you know you love your dad but you live in fear of him uh, and that comes across uh, in this film and the mother is the opposite. She is love and joy, always. Um, you know, I, I can't totally identify with that. Again, I think the two, the mother and father characters are archetypes and designed to uh, express a point. Um, again, it, at the very beginning of the film in narration, uh, it's talked about you must choose the way of nature or the way of grace which is it going to be and I think that's what Brad Pitt and Chastain uh, represent uh, the kids here are really outstanding they uh, I mean all again all of the acting is outstanding Sean Penn doesn't have much to do I mean he gets some good narration everyone gets good narration at least well-written narration, uh, wise narration. Now, whether... I mean, and it's delivered in a, a robotic, otherworldly kind of way. Um, again, I kind of go back to my thinking that the entire film is uh, from the aspect of heaven, um, from the aspect of God. Uh, it, they, they just seem to have no emotion whenever they narrate. So that sometimes leads to like a little lull. I mean, obviously this film is going to, 
uh, lull you into thinking. I mean, you will, you probably can't help but think about your own life while you watch this. So, I really can't say that's a detraction um, because I, I think it's engineered to at least connect that way. But, I mean, again, you do have to sometimes bring yourself back into the film to forget about yourself for a while and uh, see what's going on on the screen. Uh, and the non-linear uh, discombobulated aspect of the story makes that easy to do. You know, you can get right back into it. Because, you know, there's nothing... There's nothing concrete in this film. You know, there's nothing concrete. Uh, nothing to really grasp. You know, they, they say if you, you know, try and grab water, the quicker and the harder you try and grab it, the quicker and more effective uh, uh, it's going to uh, leave your grip. You know, there's no way you can grasp water and uh, I think there's, you, sh you know, you shouldn't try and tackle this film. You should let it work on you. Um, it really is magnificent. It's one of the best movies I've seen this year. Uh, it's certainly one of the most important in terms of breaking, uh, you know, story structure and um, just being a mass-marketed film that is surreal and abstract and about the big things in life uh, really being about life itself um, I, I don't really know what else to say about it uh, it's, an, it's an excellent film it's an excellent film fantastic music um, the music perfectly fit uh, the moods um, or the at least the images, uh, excuse me. Um, I mean everything. You know everything equals to a transportive experience, and where you're transported to is somewhere within yourself. Um, maybe that's true of all films, but it's definitely true of this one. So that's the Tree of Life. Um, I mean, it's a 9. It's a 9.5, and I hate that point five, so it makes me round up to a 10. Uh, I mean, it's it's a masterpiece. You know, it's... I haven't seen all of Malick's work, but it has to be his best film. Um, it's fantastic. It's the Tree of Life. Thanks.